instead of r, it's going to be 3 cosine theta squared, and then 3 sine theta, like that. So this becomes 9 cosine squared theta. It's common to put the square above the, the last letter, just notation, times 3 sine theta. The 3 and the 1 third cancel, or you can do the 9 and the 1 third, and then multiply by 3. It ends up being 9 pi cosine squared theta sine theta. Okay. Okay, I see. And then I have, um, which one was it? Oh, it was 62. Great. So this is uh, remembering your even and odd things. So if I tell you the cosine of X, whatever it is, I don't know, pick a number. Um, what's called C? That's bad. We'll call it A. Cosine of minus X is also A because they're even. Mm-hmm. And so the, in, your, in your textbook and your reference materials, you'll see something like this. Mm -hmm. And that's for even. So the answer here is that it is it is that number. Okay. Okay. Now, now you could similarly be, similarly be asked, like, let's say the sine of uh, phi is um, 0 0.3. The sine of minus phi or phi is negative sine of phi because it's an odd function. Mm -hmm. makes it minus 0 0.3. Okay. Tangent is also odd. So that negative goes out in front. Okay. And then, where did it go? There's this one that just like threw me off and I'm pretty sure I'm like overcomplicating it significantly, but it sounds like you've it. been through the study guide a couple of times now. We're really working through this. Yeah, one one too many times. <laughs> oh it's important. This is the one. It was um it was eighty two. And the only reason I know the answer is because I like did something similar on my homework and it's like a little, it's like slightly less than the one that like the percentage it states, but I can't remember how to find it. Yeah. All right. A population grows with an annual growth rate of 16.6% per year. What is the continuous growth rate per year? So the uh, growth is one plus R. So it's one plus 0.166, okay? So there's there's two equations using PAT and uh, PERT. Mm -hmm. These are the same, so you don't care about those. Um, the, the thing here is that you can make kind of the one on the right, kind of like the one on the left, if you put it to the T power, mm -hmm. which means that A equals E to the R. Your A, is 1.166. How do you undo E? No, um, natural log. Natural log of both sides. Oh. Uh, and so R equals natural log 1.166. Okay. And I think that, I think it was like 15.4, I think. Was it? Let's take a look here. Let's grab calculator. Yeah. Yeah, 15.4%. Yeah. There it is. It's tough thing to remember. Um, that's how you go back and forth between base E and base other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I had a question on 79. I kept like getting mixed messed up with the one exponent okay. 
Yeah, this is another composition problem. So you start with the uh, inside function g of x, which is 3 to the x, and that goes in for x and the other. Mm -hmm. So it's log base 3, 9 times 3 to the x. Is there a way to write 9 as 3 to some power? Uh, yes. What would that be? To the second. So it's 3 squared times 3 to the x. When the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So tell me what the new exponent is here. So then it would just be three, um, two times x, three to the power of two times x. But you're adding I mean, the two plus x. <laughs> yeah, or x plus two. It's easy to do. That's why I asked. It's easy to do what you just did. Now, whatever the exponent is, it can come out in front. Mm-hmm even if it's an expression. When the base of the log is the same that you're taking the, the log of that's equals one. Mm -hmm. So the answer is just X plus, plus two. Okay. That makes sense. And then... Okay, ready to go. Sorry, <laughs> things like twenty three pages. I'm like, oh, pretty. Big time. We have plenty of time today. Um, you may even find it's useful to have me rework some of the problems you already worked out to see if there's a better way, or maybe you made an assumption that only worked on that problem, kind of thing. Ooh, is there any way we could do some like trigonometry, like yeah, the. Um... If you if you specify like, hey, I'd like more questions like this, it, it helps me to know kind of the area mm -hmm. of the course that you're in. Yeah, I'd say like doing exact values of like num like oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find an example. Like um if you like sixty-eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you'd like some more problems like 68? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, there's, there's a lot of these that we can do. Let's do uh that's a good one. All right. So the one thing I can't, well, I can find some multiple choice, but we'll do them without. We'll, but uh, could you, um, if this was really two u squared minus three u plus one equal zero, could you, could you factor this? Mm -hmm. Okay, would you do that for us, please? So it would just be two. Um, wait, hold up. Sorry, my brain all of a sudden broke on me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it'd be two u minus. Wait, hold up. Sorry, I need to write this out. <laughs> hold up. Take your time. All right, so it'd just be like two u minus two, and then u minus one. Or did uh, I just? That, well, that does not foil uh, back to the original. Oh, shoot. How did I, like, all of a sudden cease to not remember this? Well, uh, they, they're not emphasizing the factoring. So you don't remember all the rules. There's only there's only uh, two factors of two, two and one, so that's fine. But you have to get to positive one, so it's either one and one or minus one and one. Since they're the same, you just try it and see what you Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. I was like, how did they get the one to the, it's because of the two. Okay. I see now. Okay. So now you're solving each of these equations. And uh, you're welcome to look at a unit circle, but I'd like the answer to these just to confirm that you know where 
where to find them. Okay, so Sophie, sorry, the dog is barking. No problem. Sorry, what, sorry, what was the question? Yeah, just find the answers on the unit circle. Um, what, give me the answers here for X. And you're welcome to use the unit circle. Like this isn't about trying to have you figure it out on your own. Uh, is it, oh my gosh. I like don't remember how to do this. The, the, the reason I'm asking for you to do this is, is, is exactly what you had said. Like, do you remember your unit circle? Will you be given a unit circle? And I don't know the answer to those things. Um, you yeah, know, I don't, most, I don't, most I don't need it. I could, I can make one, but I don't take the test. Like, I don't, I'm, like, it doesn't matter to me, you know, anymore. But you as a student have to figure that out. Like, that's, mm -hmm. it's always yeah. the game, you know. So you're, you're, like, for me, if there's like a couple of students take out of this course, it's like that they know their unit circle. That, like, that's a big deal. If you have the unit circle, it's pretty easy. You're just looking for the y value. Where's the y value one half? Where's the y value one? There are three total answers for this. Okay, so then. Let me know if you need help. I'm happy to jump in. Are you okay? <laughs> oh my gosh i like my brain is like we it's did okay. this like in like one lesson and i'm like oh no okay so <laughs> here's the y value and here's the y value of one so oh five over six and five over six okay and then, and then where's the y value one also at pi over okay. two Oh, I remember that now because of like the the identities that have like the. Okay, let's do. Are you allowed to use a calculator? Yes. Okay, so that does change this up a little bit. Um, you could, for example, try the multiple choice answers. Make sure your mode is in radians. Okay. Like, like you could try sine pi over six and see if it's one half. Sine yep. and pi over two and see if it's one. I don't, I don't love that, but that's, you know, that's, that is possible. Okay. So here's another one for you to try. And I'm trying to choose ones that have specific techniques. The last one was uh factoring. This one is another type of factoring. Isn't two sine plus one, or is it like, I think it's like two sine, maybe it's like minus one. Isn't that go to light? Did you factor out a cosine theta from both? Yes. Okay, so it's two sine theta plus one. Mm -hmm. So you're setting each of these equal to zero. Yes. Oh, I see. And then you're doing something sim you know really similar. You're looking... On the right, sine theta equals negative one half, cosine theta equals zero. Could you look for those on the unit circle? Do you need, if you need a link to that reference sheet, I'll just drop it in the chat again, in case you need that. I would print that out too, that reference sheet, have it with yeah, you. I definitely need to look at that. <laughs> Okay. So then when cosine just be like pi over pi over two. There's two places where the x value is zero. 
You've got one of them. Oh, and then three pi over two. Yeah, it's really easy on a multiple choice for the first answer to like only include one of the two answers. Mm -hmm. You th you'd think that it's that it's correct. And then wouldn't sine just be pi? Nope. You're looking for where it's the y value is minus one half. Oh shoot, I didn't step it out of the two. Oh, so then it would just be 7 pi over 6 and then um, 11 pi over okay. 6. Good. That was a struggle. <laughs> Let's try another one here. Let's say I ask you where the tangent of theta is minus 1 and where like the secant of theta equals the square root of 2. Wait, wouldn't tangent one just be stating the slope of it the is, circle? It, it is, but there's a place where uh, there are two angles where that this is true. Because what we're really saying the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, they're the same but opposite in sine. Mm -hmm. So then wouldn't it be... Where is y over x equal to negative one? Oh, it would just be in three pi over four, right? Or is that's, that? That's what. That's one of them. And then seven pi over four. Okay, that's the other. Now the the one on the right here is a little bit more difficult because it's really there is no place where there's secant on the inner circle, but one over cosine theta. And if and uh, if you if you take the reciprocal of one side, so on the left you make a cosine theta over one, you have to take the reciprocal of the other side. And then when you rationalize, you're really looking for where the cosine of theta equals the square root of two over two. And that's the x value. Oh, okay. So then it would have to be just pi over 4 and then 5 oh. pi over 4. Uh, check that second one. Is that really, is the x value really positive there? Oh, wait, hold up. That is certainly not. So then it would, it would, it would be in the fourth quadrant. So it would just be the seven pi over four. So you can bet on a multiple choice test, they would have all the possible variations with the wrong answers. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there another problem that you would like to kind of see another similar problem type to it? Or do you want more of those? Mm, I would say... 69 the one above it because it's more restricted okay um um that one's pretty specific like it, like I, I, I would have a hard time making up another one like it, and I'm not sure even sure how you solved it. I would tell you to just try the answers in that okay. setting. Oh, just like plug them in for x. Yeah, and sometimes you can get, you can remove the ones that don't work, but yeah. the thing is, it's 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 um, 
the, the only real way to do it is to use uh, some, I'm sorry, uh, some formulas, some indifference formulas, but I would, I would just try the answers, um, especially yeah. if you have a calculator. Okay. But 68, you can make up a lot more of if you want. Uh, 69, not so much. But yeah, do you have some other problems, types in here that you would like us to look at? Kind of find the one you don't know where it went. Or which page it ended up on, but somewhere. Oh my goodness, where did it go? I'm just going to look on the actual study guide. Okay. See if I can find it real quick. Oh, okay. Like, I actually haven't done 38 yet, actually. Like, some of these um functions or problems. Okay, 38. Take a look at. All right. Uh, rectangles inscribed in a semicircle with a diameter of 10 centimeters. As shown, express the area of the rectangle as a function of the height of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is a function of the height of the rectangle. Okay. So the. Um, The area of the rectangle is its base times its height. So you know that you know there's going to be an H in there. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the um, the equation of How do they want you to do this? This one's a little bit. Uh, okay, so the diameter of the circle is 10. So the radius is five. So that's five there. So the, the, um, ang the, um, let me write it differently. So if, if, if this were just, uh, Trying to I'm trying to decide how to do this because the the equation of a circle is this. They're just using different letters um, in your problem here. So the uh, the because what you really want is the x value. Mm -hmm. The h is really the y, so it's really x squared plus h squared equals twenty five. Mm -hmm. So if you solve this for x x is 25 minus h squared square rooted. And so that's the, the base is double that. The base, the, there's two of those, two square root 25 minus h squared times the h. So it becomes 2h square root of 25 minus h squared. Okay. And then, is it possible to do some more with the function? Or actually, hold up. There's one below it that I have yet to do yet, actually. You're talking about 39? Yeah, 39. 
Okay, why don't you try to work through it a little bit and ask me some questions. This one's more straightforward because you know what you know what volume is, you know how to find surface area. Mm -hmm. Ask some questions if you got it and certainly go through it as well if needed. So wouldn't you just take the volume and then, because it's just, that wouldn't it just be like the 120 equals W squared times height? And then wouldn't you take that and then solve for H and then plug whatever value that is back in for H? So we're, we're interested in the cost of it though. What you said, everything oh. is good so far. We're interested in the cost. So you want to assign those, those, those dollars to whichever sides they go to. And so you're really, you're really your second equation is surface area. I'm like trying to remember how to do this because I remember doing okay. like yeah, that's fine. So yeah, that's where I jump in here and help a little bit. So the bottom, the bottom is, and sometimes you draw it, it's W and W. Okay. Now it says it's an open top, which is weird. I don't know why they do that. I mean, how many boxes have an open top? I mean, none, but the math problems they seem to. So there's no top. <laughs> and then there's four sides, W and H. Mm-hmm. So times four. So the cost, you gotta you gotta map match up. So it costs ten dollars per square foot for the bottom material. So ten and ten. Mm -hmm. And then um twelve dollars per square foot for the sides. So that's no, sorry, it, I, I meant that meant this is not correct. Sorry, we're gonna get we're gonna get the this is ten and this is twelve. So the cost is you have ten W squared. Mm -hmm. plus WH times four times 12. So this is 10 W squared plus 48 WH. And that's where you recognize, oh, my function is really a function of both W and H. And I'm not mm -hmm. in vector calculus yet, so I don't know how to do this, right? So the, the, you have to find something where you can solve for H. Well, you already said that. You said, I'm going to solve this equation for H. H is really 120 over W squared. You're going to put that in for, for H. Oh, okay. N W squared plus 48 W times 120 over W squared. Mm -hmm. So then you would just like simplify them and then just cross multiply. Yeah, you're just multiplying the 48 and 120. W mm -hmm. cancels with one of the W's down there. So you got 10 W squared plus whatever 48 times 120 is over W. Okay, so then it would be 5,760. 
and then uh, just match that up to the answer. Okay, so just be C. Okay. Just like letter C. Okay, and then I think there's another file. I'm trying to find it real quick. Oh, 46 was one that I was like staring at for quite a while. All right. Um, so use the information below to find the vertical asymptotes of, okay, of f of x. So n of x is a quadratic function with zeros, x equals six, x equals 18. So this, this would look like this, x minus six, x minus 18. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, and they're saying, hey, that's the top. Um, D of x is a linear function with a zero at x equals nine. Uh, zero just means that that's where it equals zero, x minus nine. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to graph y equals x minus nine, that's the zero we're talking about. So now this 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 over here to the right is your f of x. Now you can answer the question, where does it have a vertical asymptote? What is a vertical asymptote where the bottom equals zero? which is at x equals nine. Okay. Sweet, and then... And then for 49, I think I was overcomplicating it, but like for the terminal point, wouldn't it just be like, the like just based off of the quadrant, like the negative, whether it's a negative or positive value for the x or the y. Yeah, I'm I'm reading over here too to kind of see what they had in mind. So to me, I think of minus t as going counterclockwise, or sorry, mm -hmm. clockwise. So minus t would put you there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you go from a reflection over the x-axis. How does that affect the coordinate? Well, a comma b, the only thing that changes is the uh, b value becomes mm -hmm. negative b. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, that makes sense now. Then let me find the other one real quick. Oh, I had a question on like 55 as well okay. for the ver vertical asymptote. Okay. All right, so I mean, a couple ways to, I mean, one way since you're allowed to use a calculator is you could literally try each of these numbers in there and it would be undefined. Okay, that's that's kind of way one. It's not mm -hmm. the best way. The best way is to remember what the graph of tangent of X looks like. Mm -hmm. So it, it normally has an asymptote at minus pi over two and pi, pi over two, mm -hmm. but it's shifted left pi over three. So you have to take pi over two and subtract pi over three minus okay. pi over two and subtract pi over three. Oh, okay. I see. So then. And that would, that would probably will give you one of the answers. Mm -hmm. So you want to try that for us and see if one of those is there. Oh, so then it would just be it would just literally be pi over six. Please. Or I mean, um, ne negative pi over six. Well, no, no, it's it's the first one is three pi over six minus two pi over 
your power of six, which is pi over six. Okay. Oh, okay, so then it'd just be, wait, hold up. How did I mess that up? So it'd just be a positive pi over six? Yes. Okay. And, and there's there's your answer. Okay, that one was easy enough. Ooh, can we do fifty-seven? Of course. So again, like if you if you just couldn't do anything, you know, you could you could put in pi over six, you know, pi over six, pi over three. The tangent of that, uh, you would find, you know, didn't work. So, uh, yes, uh, said fifty-seven. Mm-hmm. Okay, we were working on problems like this on the study guide. You do make a substitution here. Mm -hmm. So you let theta equal sine inverse of x over 3. So the sine of theta equals x over 3. You draw a triangle here. Here's theta. Here's x. Here's 3. Could you give me the... Uh, the leg here, how you would find the leg using Pythagorean theorem. So then it would just be a equals the square root of nine minus x, x squared. Okay, very good. And so now if you go back, to, so we made this whole thing theta. So we're, we're trying to find the tangent of theta, which is x over the square root of nine minus x squared. And then you look for that one in your, in your uh, answers, answers there. Okay, so then just it would just be d then, okay. Trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, 70 was one. Okay. That kind of killed my brain a little bit. Probably be our last question here, unless it's mm -hmm. really super short. Um, uh, the raised circle below is 18. So if we were to redraw this, actually, let me, so the radius is 18 and 18. Theta 18, this is 18 plus D. Mm -hmm. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So um, radius. What's the length of D? So you're solving this for D now? Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you cross multiply. So you have 18 plus D times cosine of theta equals 18. You divide both sides by cosine of theta. 18 plus D equals 18 over cosine theta. Subtract 18 from both sides. D equals 18 over cosine theta minus 18. Okay, so then it'd be A. Looks like it's letter A. Hey, Dickie.
for some reason this study guide even though there's like a can like a crap ton of problems it's like the easiest study guide i think i've seen the whole semester which doesn't make any sense remember they they can't touch test you on specific problems it's general knowledge that's true um so keep that in mind um as you're solving working through it okay um one thing before we close out here